All right. Well, the recording has started and uh, I'll see you later. Cool. Thank you. All right. Glad you're here with the late notice of being uh, um, uh, the meeting being an hour or hour earlier. Um, so it's now updated in the calendar, and uh, well, I think we should be good now. So uh, uh, let's hope this is the last time uh, we have to move it until, of course, the next time comes up that we have to move it. But let's hope that doesn't happen for a while. Um, let me see, grab the meeting notes. I'll post them in the chat. Right. Um. Awesome. Um, I think we can get started and uh, maybe someone else joins still. Um, uh, but let's get started. Um, let me see. I need to remember uh, to uh, remember you to uh, abide by the higher pledge code of conduct and the antitrust policy. Um, if you would like, you can add yourself to the attendees list so people know you've been here um, and can reach out to you if needed. Um, is there anyone new here today that would like to introduce themselves? Yeah. Hello. Uh, it's from my first meeting, uh, which I attended. Uh, my name is Aziz. I am from DSR and we use uh, Eris Framework JavaScript in our projects. Uh, yeah, it's me. Thank you. Cool. Good to have you here. Hi, Timo. This is Saroj here. So I'm also joining the meeting for the very first time. I'm from India and I'm using the whole like Eris framework and I'm trying to integrate with it by fold application so I can have a mobile widget mobile agent for my <clears throat> project. I have been asking a lot of questions recently. So I have your doubts. So if we'll have the time, I'll go through them also. Thank you. Cool. Yeah. Have here. Anyone else? Or otherwise we can just get started. Cool. Okay. Um, let me see. Um, let's quickly go through all the status updates. Um, was there a bifold meeting this week? Uh, 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 can get an update on or whether no, it was this week. All right, uh, I can at least give an update on um, the work we've been doing um, with Bifold is um, a bit slow. Um, can people hear me fine or is, is, the, is the connection choppy? You were a bit laggy before, but it's fine now, at least for me. Okay, yeah. Please let me know when it happens again. So maybe I can switch to my hotspot then. Um, yeah, so uh, it, we've been working, uh, continuing to work on like the move to the shared uh, components, removing in the SDK and using the Ares Oscar in the VDR or Anocrats. Uh, that kind of works. We just need to uh, uh, still test the migration script that's being added, but like checking that if uh, an indie SDK wallet is correctly upgraded. And once that's done, I think the PR should be able to merge. Um, there is the issue still of like supporting um, 
older Android versions, which I think the um, PC Gov team is looking at currently. Um, uh, Bjorn, do you know more about that? Uh, no, I, I was a bit late. I, I sent um, a message that I think we can have a meeting about it tomorrow and then they will uh, look into it. Um, but that should probably start, I think, late this week still or next week. Okay, yeah. Okay, so that's it on the, um, yeah, the five fold creation, but yeah, it fully works in, in, in React Native now. And uh, yeah, we hope to have them by fold updated to AFJ040 soon with the shared uh, component libraries. Um, yeah, uh, where's my screen? Yeah, I still also hope we can soon get uh, Expo uh, to work. Uh, if you're building a custom wallet um, with the shared components, because I think that that will make for the easiest setup. But for at least for now, like the bio project doesn't use Expo and that uh, that's working uh, fine. So yeah, let's hope we can really soon make the um, yeah stable releases for for all the dependencies and then uh, probably a lot of bugs to fix that we will discover because there's been a lot of changes. But uh, yeah, I think we're uh, we're getting there. Um, if you want to test it out already, I think now would be a good time to do it. If you pick latest AFJ with the latest shared component libraries um, and add them to your React Native project, it should work out of the box. Uh, as I mentioned, Expo doesn't work yet, so you need to do uh, like a, a plain React Native project, but then you can just add the dependencies, set it up, and it should work. So um, yeah, uh, if you want to test it out and uh, provide some feedback, then uh, or like test it out and see if there's any issues, that uh, that could also be appreciated. Um, cool. Then on the RS call, I wasn't there, but I think they talked about did Bear again. Was anyone at the air at the RS call? I think Ariel, you were right, or yeah, but I I joined it late, so I don't <laughs> I I don't know exactly what they. I think that they were mostly talk, talking about the uh, OCA. Because Stephen did a, a presentation, but I I joined as I said I, I joined later, so I, I have not so much info. OCA Maybe bundles, yeah, OCA bundles. Stephen Curran did a presentation for the pretty much the whole meeting. I'll see if I can find the link uh, to his presentation or his uh, rather his. Uh, he uh, should have kept it. He, he gave a, there was a a link to a GitHub repository. Ariel, did you get that? No, but I, I can I can look at it. See if you can dig that out. That was all there was the entire meeting. Okay, cool. Then yeah, if you sent the link, then I'll add it here. Uh Pyfold is uh PR open for sure. Add it. Um and you can add the link here. Cool. Okay. Uh, did Confi to AFP3? Uh, any updates on that in the last week? Uh, all right. Um, then for the shared components, yeah, as I just said, works in React Native now. We have uh, a PR open in, in uh, Bifold. Just need to check with the migration script, but otherwise, uh, we're as good as go to release, I I think. We're now on, what is the, oh, I think these are the, uh, so, uh, this one, yeah. So uh, no support for older Android versions yet, but otherwise they um, work. Um, cool, okay. Um, any questions uh, for the more on the shared components or the bifold integration or the whole 040 release or? Okay, then let's move on to the agenda. Uh, I uh, link to Esteban, you mean the link to this document?
I'm assuming so. So I'll share this. Um, cool. Okay. Yeah. So um, quickly, announcement is that there's a new time for this meeting um it's now always the hour before the toc and it's also anchored in the u.s time zone so it will be uh, uh nothing new to see anymore there's a new link um for it and i'll uh, update it to um uh i'll update it to uh, in the wiki uh, after this uh meeting so people can find it for future and i think it's also mentioned in the afj uh, or yeah, in the AFJ repository. Uh, I don't know if it's in the bifold. I don't think probably only the bifold link. But yeah, if if you find an occurrence of like a linked Zoom um, anywhere, uh, yeah, please update it to this new uh, link because the old one um, will stop working. Um, I wanted to discuss the GitHub runner limitations uh, for a bit that has been popping up. But I didn't have a lot of other topics for the agenda for today, so I'm curious if people have. Um, Topics they would like to um, discuss. Maybe later I can I can show you the the individual proxy that I mentioned last week. I know that yeah uh, maybe when uh, when the issues on on Android are solved uh, I mean, in the Android versions. Maybe the, it will not be needed for some uses, uses but maybe for others, it's, uh, it can be useful. So maybe I can show you. Yeah, cool. Yeah, I think that that will be nice. I think it's also like with uh, being behind the firewall, this has been an issue uh, uh, before. So yeah, cool. Uh, um, uh, and yeah. On the last meeting, we briefly talked about the 050, the feature release planning. Uh, I don't know if I've had a chance to think about it, of some of the other features, or maybe somebody else has something else to add. Uh, sorry, I need to quickly switch my internet. I think it's not working today. Uh, is it you or is it me? Can it, anybody, me. anybody else hear me? <laughs> it's Timo, it's Timo. Yeah, Cliff is talking about, maybe we, we can continue discussing about the 050. Um, no, I, I think Timo is priest, right? <laughs> yeah, he is switching to his old school now. <laughs> okay. I guess not. No, yes, I just heard something. Okay, okay. Can you hear me? Yes. Yes. Okay, perfect. Sorry, I just switched to my hotspot. I hope it's better now. The internet at the office here is sometimes really bad. Um, okay, cool. Sorry, what were you saying, Klesia? Because I missed uh, 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 the important part of your sentence. So I, I heard uh, everything, <laughs> but not what you, the thing you were saying. I just typed in chat. So I continue the conversation about prioritization for 5050 yeah. or what is it the next release? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That sounds, uh, uh, yeah, I think that's a good one. Let me copy the notes from last week. Uh, now we can add it like this. Cool. Okay, anything else? Okay, then uh, let's get started. Um, so I wanted to have a quick discussion on the GitHub burners limitation is that since recently uh, Hyperledger, not Hyperledger, GitHub has started enforcing a rule they've had for uh, a long time is that you, they, Hyperledger has 23 runners, um, which means that they're now completely always overloaded because across Hyperledger, a lot more runners uh, are being used. And that means that pull requests have been queuing for a long time, um, which makes it harder to merge PRs and get the CI um, to pass. And it doesn't help that we have flaky tests because then like rerunning can literally take hours and hours and it's been quite an annoyance. So 
I think point A here is, um, yeah, please be aware of that, that it can be uh, at the moment quite uh, hard to, to get CI to, to run, so that it may take a bit longer. Um, B is maybe we can look at reducing our load a bit because uh, we've never looked at um, at that, but I know like we have tests in four different Node.js versions. I think there's PR open to reduce it to two now because we dropped some Node versions, but um, yeah, maybe there are some things we can do to minimize the amount of resources being used. Um, and my question was also if somebody maybe wants to take a look at that and see like if we can, can optimize it a bit, um, yeah. Well, but now, now that we are going to only test on node 18, I think it's 16 and 18, right? So we will reduce a little bit the, the load. Yeah, but I think 20 will come out in, um, uh, in a few weeks, I would say. I think it comes out in April. Uh, mm -hmm. And I think we should add that as soon as possible. Um, I do think we can maybe stop supporting like non LTS versions. I think they have like always the, uh, like the odd ones are non, not long uh, LTS and the even numbers are, I think. Um, um, so we say like we support 16, 18, 20 uh, or something. Okay. Or would you say like we we support everything, also nineteen and uh, like everything that is currently not uh, end of life? Well, actually, I I I don't know because up to now we we were we were uh, running on uh, 14, 16, 17, and eighteen, right? But yeah, what? What's the reason of that? I mean, for the seven because the seventeen is more more or less like eighteen, right? Or or is is it like like that? Well, I don't know. Have you found issues on seventeen that were not in in eighteen or? The odd no, ones are sort uh, of like experimental, yes. right? Uh, they're experimental. And the even ones are the long-term support ones. So odd yeah. is if you want to try brand new features that are going to come out probably in the next even numbered one. But the ones that you want to use in production are usually even. Yeah, that's I think also what I like. I never know people that run Node.js 15 or 17. They're always like you move from the even to the even ones unless you're... Um, so that was thinking that this also is like a, a bit of a less like matrix we have to support, but then we have like the 16, which is in maintenance. We have the 18, which is long-term support and then 20 when it comes out, we add it, but like 19, um, we can then skip just to like um, make it a bit less of a target we have to support um, and have to test for and deal with, um, but I, it's, Probably like, I think if we support 20 and 18, I think we'll support 19 out of the box. There's not too many breaking changes always in um, Node.js releases. Yeah, I think if you can support the, uh, I don't think we need to support the, the releases in between necessarily. So I, I agree with the thought process from a uh, that reduces the GitHub runners uh, issues as well as uh, maintenance that we need to do to troubleshoot issues on uh, the other versions. Yeah. Okay. Um, cool. And I think for React Native, it's also not an issue, right? I think that also works with quite a broad number of Node.js versions, usually to uh, uh, 
uh, like which you need for React Native development. Yeah, I think doing the CI is. Uh... I don't know if we have good CI options for testing across a variety of React Native versions. So I think the node the node tests is where I would probably stick to and then rely on um, implementation, rely on bifolds tests to, to handle that with the React Native pieces. Yeah. OK, cool. So it's quite an interesting thing that you like. Uh, we don't test in React Native AFJ, but there are certain features that are like with all the different engines you have, like uh, JavaScript Core and Hermes, and um, that not everything is supported in every engine, which sometimes makes it like a bit of a trial and error and see like, oh, if we add this, does it break? Uh, yeah. Right. And, and it is challenging to test uh so it's definitely a, I, I think we've done a good job at handling that so far though yeah yeah cool i think the bifold is also a good, good place there to just like test it out if things break um and make sure we can fix it then afj yeah. okay then i think not much on on that anymore i think the i pledge will probably come with some sort of solution i know they had some self-hosted uh, runners we may be able to use some of them and we can reduce the resources being used a bit but also like as an, as an fyi it can take longer um uh, to get things uh merged and it's always I still want to look at the merge queue for AFJ. I just wasn't sure how it works with squashing and the signed off by, because currently what we often have is there's a lot of PRs and we all want to merge them. Then like we run CI on one PR that then succeeds, but in the meantime, another PR is merged. So then we have to update the branch again, and then the CI has to run again, but then another PR merged. And then like the CI has run like six times on a six times on the branch and it hasn't been merged yet because every time another pr is merged so it's, it's sometimes um difficult to have an order in which we merge prs for which the merge queue could be really useful of course um so i think it's also something we can look at to not have to manually uh uh yeah go at each pr and just update them all um every time um Cool. Okay. Anything else on this? Otherwise, uh, I think uh, Ariel can show us the NVIDIA proxy. Okay. Cool. I'll stop sharing. Let me know if it's okay. Can you see the, the screen? See, sí. see, sí? perfect. <laughs> yeah, I don't know exactly why, but uh, the guys from Animo have started to speak in Spanish between themselves. I don't know if it's for my influence or what, <laughs> but yeah, it's well, just it's a, only one word. See, sí. <laughs> <laughs> no, but the other day they, they say gracias amigo, which is also in Spanish. So <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> well, this is. <laughs> This is uh, this is a repo we have in uh, published in, in GitHub. I, I will I will send the, the link after. The idea of this uh, uh, this proxy is to allow a mobile app. It can work for any application, but based on AFJ. But the, the the main idea is to to allow a a mobile application based on AFJ to uh, access uh, in the objects without the need of embedding the individual client. So what are the reasons why you would want to do that? Well, we can say, for instance, that we can make the application a bit lighter. So uh, because we are simply using an HTTP uh, REST API to, to, to access uh, to every, every ledger instead of having to 
open handles for, for each uh, ledger you want to support. Uh, and also uh, we can solve the problem of some, uh, some uh, uh, traffic uh, filters that there are that, that uh, prevent <coughs> mobile applications to access state MQ sockets like the ones from Indy. Um, and also, well, in, 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 in this particular case that we are uh, uh, having now that we have a problem with the, with the, in the VDR that is not working on Android versions below uh, 11, we can uh, skip that and, and, and work on, on any, any, uh, any Android versions. Uh, uh, after seven at least so that's why i i have this emulator it's an android 7 emulator just to show that it's working it, it was a bit hard for me to to use it because i, I <laughs> it feels like a bit, a bit old right but, but uh, so I, here we here i i have the well i have the the, the, the proxy server a proxy server uh, running on, on my local machine. In this case, uh, so the, the, the app is is, is uh, using it. And I will use the Animo demo, the classic Animo demo, just to show a bit how is it uh, resolving uh, the, the deeds and schemas and so on. So we have we have our our application here. Um, I will do the connection. I just jam. Here I have this. So I scan the <laughs> it's like my 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 pc is getting a bit slow with the screen sharing Okay, so now we are connected. I swear that it, it my, my, my computer will work a, a lot better without this screen sharing, but okay. We have the, the credential offer, and when we when we accept it, uh, we should start fetching the the credential definitions uh, the credential definition from the uh, from the ledger. In, in this case, we are using the VC Ring test network. I will see if I can show that a little bit. Uh, bigger the, the log. So you see we, we have here the retrieving the credential definition, the schema, and the credential is issued. And all, all of that without the need of using in the application the the in the VDR, right? This is more or less how I how we are uh, initializing the age and I will show you we what we do is to to provide the individual base URL, and we have to, we we simply register uh, the to the unknown module the individual proxy registry, 
in this case, I'm using also a new did web and ungraph recursive data that we are developing because in our project we are not using uh, uh, in DVDR for 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 our uh, credentials. Um, and also in the DITS module, we have this new this individual proxy did resolver that is based on this uh, proxy based URL. So basically, um, if we see, see the repo, in the case of the of the client where we have a, 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 this, this explanation, as I said, and in the on the server side, what we have is a server that is also running an, an AFJ agent. Actually, we we started by using uh, the plain uh, individual library for that, but then we found out that it, it was easier if we took advantage of all the the work that has been done on on the management of the different pools and and so on in the in the individual package for for from AFJ. So we are using AFJ in this uh, in, in this server that can can run. Uh, in a standalone way, like, like it's running right, right now in my machine. But also you can uh, import as a module uh, if you are using uh, Nest, Nest.js because we are using Nest.js for, for our servers. So for a while, maybe that, that's it. Actually, something that I would like to, to say also is that maybe this can, this functionality can be added to the to the uh, REST interface for the, the, the in the Airy JavaScript uh, ext package, uh, ext repo. But the problem I, I actually I, I wanted to, to to add it, but it was easier for me to to do to to do it like like that because uh, at the moment it's a bit outdated the the REST. Uh, uh, API. So maybe we can, uh, as soon as we can uh, release the zero four zero, maybe we can we can do an update on the on the REST uh, package and and probably uh, add this uh, this anon uh, schema credential definitions and object resolution for that can be useful also to to use as a, as a proxy, right? So yeah, so this is how how it's working. I will stop sharing so I can leave. I, I can leave my CPU to to have a breath. <laughs> so uh, I want to say this is um, pretty cool, Ariel. Uh, there's a little bit of a fun overlap where Indicio has been working on the NDVDR proxy work as a uh, for the client. So we've done some implementation there. And so I don't know how these two should converge. Our approach was to um, uh, make a similar module to like the NDVDR module um, so that you could register that in, in place of NDVDR. Um, and would use the similar functions. And there's a little bit of awkwardness and timing based off of we were trying to do it while the middle of the 040 uh, refactors were happening. So there would be a little bit of refactoring we need to do, I think, but there might be some things where we want to converge in our approach. Okay, yeah, in, in, in this case, actually, if you see, uh, if you look at the at, at the repo, you will see that there is there there is not so much code added to to what has been done, and I will I will show the I will share the link. Um, because we, we are actually using mostly what is what has been done on on, on the uh, uh, Ares framework in the VDR package. And, and also respecting the, the, the same API for the resolution. So um, maybe, uh, but I, I don't know in, in the case of Indicio, uh, 
your your development has been done for for uh, AFJ clients or, or or for any client? I mean, it's it, it's a general API or. or oh, so we we were specifically focusing on the AFJ client, so the mobile side being able to use the exact same call to I want to get a credential definition. Um, it doesn't necessarily know that it's going to use the NVDR proxy or if it's going to use any VDR. Um, we were just using the, in terms of the actual server, we were just using that straight out of the gate that is in the, um, uh, in the NVDR repo itself. So we didn't do anything in terms of wrapping it with AFJ, which sounds nice because it is clunky in terms of you have to run multiple servers to handle multiple ledgers, for instance. Yeah. Yeah. The, 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 yeah. But because I, I have seen in the in the NVDR repo, there is a um, there is a a proxy server, but it, yeah, it's it only works on a on a, on a you you have to to do an instance for each uh, ledger you you you, yep. you want to support. Um, in in at the moment we are only using it for for resolving the. Uh, Objects we are not using for for uh, signing transactions. So, because it, it it's actually I think it's at the moment is it's the only use case for for mobile. Maybe in the case of the verifier can be uh, can be added, but but for the moment as a holder side I think it's it's enough. But yeah, maybe if we if we are going to to support the registration, maybe we have we have to think a little bit about how to to pass the DIDs or I don't know. And about the about Clesho, uh, uh, question, yes, in our case, our mediator, what we are calling the cloud agent, because it has other features other than than, than the mediation. Uh, in, in, in there we are adding this feature so we have it's part it's part of this uh, uh, mediator let's say i think the the key thing from when we had looked at it it's not necessarily tied have to it, like you can run it on the same server as the mediator but it doesn't necessarily have to be the same server so you yeah. it's not tied to it but it can be exactly yeah 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 exactly yeah in in, in this case you can you can uh, run it in the same server as, as you say. As we are using uh, an agent, an, an AFJ agent under the hood, because we have to instance it to to run the the, the individual package and and, the, and load the unknown cred package and, and so on. Uh, you can use the same agent for for your mediator and for for your uh, individual proxy if you want. But if not, it's you can use it as, because in our case we are using also AFJ for for mediation. Actually, we are using AFJ for everything in our solution. I I thought there was an idea or proposal to for that to be kind of the same way that Akapai and agents have feature discover mediator would have that feature as well and kind of wall out just auto discover. It's a mediator to support VDR, VDR and auto configured things. So, I, I think one of the things I'd say is that we had talked about a variety of solutions, and I don't think that one's off the table. Of um, From a short term perspective, the Indie VDR proxy is a really good option. But from a long term perspective, it would be really nice to be able to talk directly to the nodes via HTTP or talk to them via DIDCOM or talk to a um, a proxy that's sitting in front of the, the ledger, whether it's a proxy for the node or you set up the mediator to do, be able to query the ledger on your behalf. So I think that we talked about a variety of things and that hasn't been implemented, but uh, I think it's still on the table as an option. It's just a, it's a longer term option than, than the uh, NDVDR proxy. Yeah, yeah, this is, a, this is a, a solution for today actually. That it that it, it it works and but but yeah for sure it will be better if 
if the nodes can talk directly on, on HTTP. I don't know exactly why they, they choose not to support it uh, right from the start. There should be a reason for that. Uh, maybe the, the, there is a problem that we have to, to think about is that uh, we have we usually usually connect to to multiple nodes so uh, so we have to to have a connection to 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 four or five or no how many nodes at the same time to to check the transaction so maybe that that can be still an overhead in a mobile environment even if it's a uh, http or bitcom I think the option that we're leaning towards is a having a proxy. I, I say we. I think the discussions that I've had with Indicio and or uh, related conversations has been leaning towards the option of a proxy server in front of each individual node and allowing them to communicate over HTTP or HTTPS. There's a little bit of a issue there in that the nodes would prefer to be able to use just IP addresses, and you can't do standard uh, self-signed certificates may give us issues on the mobile end, which is what you have to do for the not having a domain name. So there's a little bit of digging that we needed to do there, but I think that's the option that um, was last discussed most uh, in depth. And uh, I would be quite curious in like, if uh, this is the, like, how easy would it be to, um, because I think if you say like every node hosts um, their own proxy and an agent would connect, like how easy would it be to have like a single proxy or I don't know how we would call it right now, but that it's just a pass through window. So for example, the proxy just connects to a, a list of nodes and um, you just send the request to it, which is already signed and it just submits it and it returns the transaction for you. Would that also be possible or? Um, um yeah that that still the client verifies the um the responses from the ledger it's just like uh passed through the proxy so you don't need like to connect on the tcp uh um level um to the nodes itself but you could still i think keep a list locally or something so if i want to connect to the indicio network i could still have the genesis file um on my end and just um to verify the response against the different like whether it's signed by uh, specific notes would that also be possible or is that what like really complex or i think that's the other option that's been discussed and we've talked about putting that on the mediator itself um i think one of the concerns that was expressed with that option is there's a uh, privacy concerns so for instance if you have someone who is running a service of this you could see what schemas, revocation registries, they're actually attempting to fetch um, versus if you compare that to the mediator, the mediator can't see any of the messages. While if you do something in front of the nodes directly, the nodes are gonna be seeing what you request anyways. So I think that was one of the things that was expressed there. Okay, yeah. Because isn't like uh, how all other um, uh, like, networks like normally you always connect through an rpc url um that would be exposed to that same uh, concern then right or is there a, do they solve that in a specific way i'm not sure honestly <laughs> and i also our requirement since we're specifically um i think our community is uh, very uh, privacy conscientious and so there may be additional requirements we have in terms of the like the any ledgers that we've done so far um but i'm not the expert on that topic so <laughs> yeah cool well, this is cool uh, ariel i see it's already open source and so it works with afj 040 um, and it's just a plugin replacement for uh, the Indie VDR module, right? So if you use this client, then you don't need to add the Indie VDR module um, to AJ, but you use this uh, Indie VDR proxy module. Yeah, well, actually, it's it's not a, a module yet. It's just a bunch of classes because um, actually, I 
well, we, we, I think we, we have to rethink a little bit how how the modules uh, will register in terms of the uh, unknown credit registries and and the because at the moment it makes it makes no sense to to create a module for that because you you really still need to provide the the the, uh, the instances to the the module and the uh, unknown credit module. So that's why, for the moment, it's just a collection of two classes, actually. <laughs> and you, you manually, you just import it from the package and you manually uh, add it to your constructor. Yeah, it's a bit weird with uh, some modules that, it, um, that you explicitly provide what you want to register, but some they just like do that internally. Um, um, and I'm also not sure what the best approach is yet. I think the, the one thing, it's a bit more explicit and it allows us to know exactly like what you register so we can correctly type the agent. Um, but it's also weird that in some places you have to register it um, explicitly and in some ways it happens implicitly. For example, the Oscar module registers the storage service in the wallet. But for in the VDR, you have to explicitly say, even though you register in the VDR module, that you want to use the in the VDR data resolver. Um, exactly. And we could just register it in the in the VDR module, of course, by default. Um, but that's, yeah, it's sometimes a bit like if you then don't want to use it, then it's uh, you're limited. So uh, yeah, not sure what the approach here should be. I think that for for the case of the resolvers, registrars, and that stuff, maybe we can allow them to be uh, added dynamically, and they can be added on the initialization uh, and on the in initialize method of each module. Because at the moment, we cannot do that because we are uh, inserting, injecting the the, the resolvers right at the uh, instantiation of the of the module, but if we are if we uh, maybe in the for instance in the in the individual module we have a method called initialized, uh, and that method calls the DITS API and adds a registrar or adds a resolver maybe that could work. Yeah. Yeah, I think yeah we should probably explore this a bit further. Uh, uh, maybe we can discuss it uh, uh, during one of the next AFJ calls and see like how do we want to how do we want that API to uh, uh, to work and make it a bit more consistent in how uh, that works. Is that something uh, you would want to do some research on Ariel and maybe like think about it and uh, come up with a way we could do it or? Yeah, yeah, maybe, maybe we, can, we can think about it. Yeah. Cool. Okay, cool. Uh, let me see, I think I added the link to the... Um, to the... Did I edit? Oh, this is from... Uh, here yeah i added it here okay cool um i think one thing related to uh which i just thought about is um that recently is it here yeah um so in afjs uh, starting from in in zero three zero we already required you to set the the indie namespace but from Zero four zero. It's going to be really important what the namespace is for things because we start uh, um, 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 using fully qualified identifiers, um, and uh, it's important that everyone is going to start using the same. Um, I created an issue here in the Indie Bit Networks uh, where this should eventually end up, and I looked at what's currently in the Universal Resolver. Um, this is the list. We currently have um, 
just curious, like if you, uh, uh, yeah, if you start using AFJ 040, and you need to know the identifiers, I would recommend look at this list. And if you are involved with any of these networks um, and it doesn't look right, uh, yeah, please say so. Because then I think if we can make sure everyone aligns on the identifiers now, then um, we won't have uh, uh, another issue that we have qualified identifiers, but people aren't actually using the same uh, identifiers to talk about the same network, which would be, uh, yeah another issue uh, we would have to deal with then um would so be, yeah just to, would it be yeah. a terrible idea to create um types for like all of the litters that are listed here so you can have either a string so they could do something custom that isn't listed but then have types so that it's a little bit more uh easy to have it be consistent yeah that might be a good one that we can do either string or one of these so you have some type hinting um we wouldn't be able to add like the genesis transactions i think that that's something we should leave to people themselves because those can update um uh in a while but yeah maybe we can add this list to the arrows javascript docs website as well and then we link to where you can find the genesis files for each of them um and how to use that network yeah yeah Cool. Uh, could you open an issue for that in the AFJ repo, uh, James? I think then, then we have at least documented, then we can look at it at, uh, uh, at some point. Yep. Cool. Okay. Uh, let me add it here. Uh, I saw Clay, she also mentioned a thing on. Um, uh proxy thing is that something can you, can you elaborate on that a bit it's also related to what you're talking about because i remember bring so i brought it out with the dd &D method that the namespace might be or may be a domain resolvable to enable all the conversation about maybe auto discovering genesis file auto discovering of uh, VDR proxy or other features, or even some metadata about the ledger. This is a production, non-production, um, and a bunch of other things down the future. I'm looking for the specification. I don't know how far it got. I know that Stephen Close has accepted, but I don't know what the final wording was. So on that list that you provided that where it has like sovereign, it'd be the domain of that ledger of that organization. Yeah, okay, really interesting. Yeah, never thought of that, that's uh, cool. Um, but I think, yeah, has this been documented or uh, because it would require the I namespace identifiers to be changed, right? Um, Right, that's why I'm confused because it has been discussed on the indie contributors, and I don't know if Stephen Close. No, there's a comment saying that it was accepted; it'd be made optional. But I just looking at the documentation for indie methods, I didn't see any any mention of that. Yeah, I also didn't see anything related to it, so I think it was agreed, but not never like uh, yeah, uh, action done. Um, Okay. Uh, I'll make a comment asking for where that is, but again, I'll just bread it up. There was something that I've I've noticed from the mobile wallet perspective would enable us to kind of auto discover ledger. We can scan a QR code that has a ledger indie ledger indie method, and we will be able to bootstrap that without necessarily be able to know where to get a Genesis file and get it going um the, the governance is to apply whether the wallet will will trust the ledger it's a different question but but you'd enable to discover new ledgers and uh, download genesis files and so on yeah yeah okay yeah that makes sense and i think in the end it's uh probably mostly up to the verifier also to see which ledgers um uh it wants to support so for a wallet it, it, it makes more sense to dynamically like add ledgers than for a verifier 
correct. Um, and James, yes, that would be per ledger. Um, I don't know. And, and and the idea is that the ledger would support a high available in the, I don't know, VDR proxy that could be linked to the underlying nodes or not. I, I'm not entirely sure. Yeah. Yeah, so it could add some, uh, it adds some centralization and dependency on like the DNS system to then do discovery um, uh, of the, yeah, of the genesis. And, and, and uh, if it's a proxy also, then yeah, it would be um, more handled by uh, the net, the ledger, which is always the question, like, is there one person that hosts that in that case then, um, uh, which can be complex, I think sometimes, yeah. Yeah. Okay, I think see we're already one minute over time. So um, let's um, stop it here. Uh, good discussions, I think. Um, um, yeah, let's continue this one next week for 050 and then we can, uh, 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 yeah, continue the discussion. Um, so let me add this here as well. Okay, thanks everyone. And uh, yeah, so remember that the, the meeting time has changed now in the, the Zoom link. So uh, uh, yeah, if you encounter old links, please update them or notify me when I can update it. Awesome, thanks everyone. Has, has all the links of the meeting being updated through Hyperledger meetings? Yeah, that one has been updated in the calendar. Uh, so I'll update it in the wiki in the high, AFJ repo still, but there's maybe some other places scattered where the Zoom link is is uh, 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 mentioned or like linked directly instead of pointing to the wiki. Okay, awesome. Thank you. Thank I you. think well, sorry to interrupt. Sorry, like I had raised a question to.